Hey there again, this is Nate. Today I'm going to start off with a riddle for you guys. So, there's a guy who has been an avid photographer, and he goes out and buys a Nikon D300, which is Nikon's top-of-the-line DX format camera. After using the D300 for a while, he decides that he needs to buy a low-light zoom, like the 70-200mm f2.8. So he goes on the internet and he researches this lens, and it's there that he learns about the crop factor that they say is applied to this lens. The guy is worried because he's afraid that the shots that he gets with the 70 to 200mm lens will be different than the shots he gets from his 18 to 200mm lens that comes with the D300 at the same focal lengths. What is this guy to do? Think about it for a second. Come up with an answer. Okay, do you have your answer? Here's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to not worry at all about the crop factor, and he's going to go and get that lens. In this video, I'm going to tell you why that is. So, the way it goes is when one uses a, an FX lens on a DX camera, it is said that there will be a 1.5 times crop factor. Now, in order to understand this, you need to understand a little bit more about the differences between a DX and an FX sensor. So right here, I have a very, very crude sketch that I've just done. This is, let's say, the size of a DX sensor, and let's say that's the size of an FX sensor. The difference between this and this is that this uh, FX sensor is 1.5 times larger than a DX sensor. Um, if you're a cannon shooter, then it's going to be 1.6 times different. So, what does this mean for lenses? So, the way lenses work is they project um, an image in the shape of a circle onto the sensor. Now, I have another little illustration for you. Please excuse uh, how crude these are. I, I just did them. Let's say this right here is our DX sensor. A DX lens will project an image circle that is just big enough to cover the DX sensor. And then down here is the same thing with an FX sensor. The FX uh, lens will project just enough so that it covers the, um, the image sensor. However, crop factor comes into play when you mix and match sensor sizes and lens sizes. When you use a DX camera on with an FX lens, you get something that looks like this. You have this teeny tiny little sensor, but a big huge image being projected onto it. And this is what they call crop factor. So now that you understand more or less what crop factor is, I'm going to show you an example of the guy in my riddles problem. I'm going to take a picture with my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which is an FX lens, at 70 millimeters, and then I'm going to take a picture with my 55 to 200 millimeter DX lens at 70 millimeters as well. And I'm going to stick them both up on the screen, and I really think you'll be surprised by what you see. So, were you surprised by what you saw? I had a YouTube user comment on uh, one of my videos, and he actually helped explain this to me, because it was something that I didn't really understand very well. But after he put this comment on my video, I decided to test around for a little bit, and sure enough, this is what I found out. Crop factor really is only noticeable when you're talking about different sensor sizes, not lens sizes, okay? So I'm going to draw you guys another little illustration so you can see a little bit better what I mean by that. Okay, so I have another uh, illustration to show you guys. This one right here is what would happen if you were using a DX camera and a DX lens. 
it would be a tiny little sensor in a tiny little image circle that only uh, picks up the guy and a little bit of grass there. If you were to use a DX sensor and an FX camera, or an FX lens, I'm sorry, you would get this. You would just get the guy in the grass, but the lens would be picking up this little stream right here and these trees. So, you're not losing any more. The fact that this lens can project more is irrelevant at this point because the sensor is the same size and picks up the exact same amount of image. Now, this is where crop factor comes in, is the next one, the one right here. Okay? So now that we have an FX lens and an FX sensor, we get the guy, the little shrubs, the stream, and both trees all in the picture. And that is the way what they call crop factor works, is that when you go from sensor to sensor, the same FX lens will show you 1.5 times less area because the sensor is 1.5 times smaller. So, bottom line, if you want to get an FX lens for your DX camera but are worried that because of the crop factor it's going to um, somehow shrink your images or blow your images up or you don't even know what it's going to do, don't worry because your images will look exactly the same except I guarantee you they're probably going to be better because if you get an FX lens chances are it's going to have a better maximum aperture like these 2.8 lenses do. So that's really the only thing is your lenses are probably going to be more properly exposed um, as you can see in the two pictures that I showed you of the other one. Um, one other thing you could see um, in the picture with the DX lens was that the corners were dark. It's called fall off and that happens when the image circle being presented by the lens to the sensor is just barely not big enough to cover the sensor and there's a little bit of a dark edge around it and you will never ever 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 get that with a with an FX lens on a DX camera body that's because as I showed in this illustration right here there's the DX sensor and here's the whole FX image area so you're never ever going to see um, fall off with a DX body and an FX lens so if you guys have any further questions about how Crop Factor works, please um, leave me a message on my video or send a comment to my channel and I'll be glad to help you guys understand this a little bit better. Because it is something that, from what I gather, very few people understand very well um, and it's something that seems to be on a lot of people's minds, especially mine. So if you have any further questions, please uh, get in touch with me. My name is Nate and I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of Crop Factor.